So a little bit of background, Rinai is an import-export business, we're a manufacturer, we're based up in Auckland, uh, not far from the airport. Uh, we design and manufacture a range of electric and gas water heating product and also space heating products. So things from electric storage tanks for the residential market through to commercial hot water systems, gas fireplaces, gas heaters, uh, central heating systems and outdoor uh, radiant heaters. So we're a manufacturer. Woo! <laughs> Here's a little bit of a background to the Renai journey. Renai, the proud pioneers behind many of the heating solutions Kiwi families enjoy, employed a design-led strategy to launch a key product to the market. You can see behind us the Neo fireplace. This has been one of our most successful fireplace designs. We were very careful to understand how the customer uh, would, would use this sort of product and, and what niche it was trying to fill. This product's been uh, very successful, dominates the segment in Australia and New Zealand and has won a uh, design award for best marketing effect. Design-led product development has also had a real impact on the company's bottom line. As a percentage of total turnover back in 2009, exports were about 11% of total turnover, that's now nudging the 20% of turnover, so a real engine room for growth. Profitability through to the bottom line, our, our business profit is now 10 times what it was back in 2009. Rinai established its own in-house product development lab to continue the success. We do a lot of creative thinking here, and we develop prototypes and run brainstorming and project meetings in this space. From a design point of view, like, thing at the the very end goal is, is return on investment and success within that product, but there are lots of little points of success along the way, you know, so we've developed a range of prototypes and we've recently done this. If someone can pick it up and just intuitively use it, then that is such a fantastic moment because all the thinking that's gone into it, all of a sudden it's, it's so simple that people can just go. And, uh, and that's a real moment of success. A customer-led design process can also bring focus to project groups. If you've got uh, a project group that goes across different organisational functions, which often is the case, then instead of arguing from each of those different functions perspective or, or debating what might be the best outcome for the product, the customer insight becomes the real sort of core centre of what that decision means. And that means you're driving decisions around what's good for the customer, not one department or, or the next might think is the best. I think culturally Renai New Zealand has really developed fundamentally since we've been involved with design thinking. We have many, many people in the organisation now that are uh, com totally committed and this is the way we go about things uh, and that is quite a change from five or six years ago uh, and that change has been very important in, in delivering some of the new products and services uh, and we see that as just a, a complete enabler for us going forward. When we have candidates come through the recruiting process they're actually commenting on uh, whether it be the website or the building here you know just just what an interesting place Renault looks like to, to be part of so that makes a difference. You know, we, we have the tyranny of distance, we're a long way from overseas markets. We have to create value, we have to create more value than perhaps our overseas competitors. And that's what design thinking does. Uh, it identifies needs that you can then tailor product and product design for uh, to deliver value. Okay, there we go. So we started our journey back in 2008, and at that point, if you line the Rinai brand up with Ream, you put Gold Air in there, you put Bosch as well, it was really difficult to point us out, um, pick us out from a crowd. So one of the, the first uh, uh, initiatives that, that happened was a complete makeover of our brand. And the centrepiece for that is our showroom, which is, which is up here. Um, within our hero photography, we use influences from Icebreaker, uh, and really tried to differentiate ourselves as a design lead company, not just a, a, a company delivering um, average sort of products. Um, so this sort of blueprint for our showroom was something that could be stepped out or uh, regenerated within merchant customers or uh, independents across the country. So if you walked into Plumbing World <coughs> in Ashburton, uh, it, it would look some, something a little bit similar to this. Um, if you opened our brochure, all those um, brand messages would be um, uh, reiterative. Uh, and also, every time we touched our product, this sort of brought, uh, this was like the face of our product, uh, bringing quality and style and integrity uh, to our product as well. So being good and different. Um, 
we had this saying which was, uh, in order to have um, great ideas, you needed to have lots of ideas. So we implemented this ideas generator. And what it is, is it starts off with a roughy. And a roughy is this piece of paper here, sitting up against the makeshift letterbox made out of a Rinai Infinity water heater. Uh, and the process is a two-pager, it's a Rinai opportunity for improvement, and across the company, if anyone's got an idea that's going to make the boat go faster, you fill out the roughy. Okay, and then that does one of three things. It goes to an engineering change notification, if it's a product change. Um, there's a category called just do it. If you've got the idea, you've got some passion for it, go away and just do it, uh, and you'll get some support to do that. Or if it's a product or a business idea, it goes into what we call the innovation pod, which is our funnel for product development. And we have a classic funnel of projects, and then they fall into our, our gate process. Um, the spinning wheel is what happens every Friday. So also what happened is that we had this idea of generosity. Every Friday, Renai, sorry, not every Friday, every, the last Friday of every month, Renai puts on a, a, a barbecue for all the staff. So we've got manufacturing and office staff, we're about 110 people. Um, barbecues come out and we, the, the company puts on a, a, a barbecue. Um, we had various notices. The spinning wheel gets spun. If you've had an idea, you've had a roughy, you get a number on that spinning wheel, and the winner gets $100. And that's pretty significant. Um, and it's been going for well, about four years up there, and in 2014 we had over 200 ideas through that system uh, on how to make the boat go faster. Um, two little stories here, so here's a 1250 fireplace. So this was a, a pretty simple idea, let's stretch out 950 and create a 1250 longer fireplace. That goes through the roughy system. Uh, this machine over here um, is a tube bending machine, so it makes a little gas pipe um, that feeds to our heaters, all different sizes and shapes. A young guy, Jordan, who would have only been about 18 years of age, was operating this uh, machine. Um, he's quite a creative guy, and he noticed that on a certain bend radius, we're getting a lot of reject parts. He redesigned the head of that machine, you can get certain heads to do certain radiuses, put his roughy in, $100, and his tool got implemented on the machine. So it not only uh, you know, increased productivity, but he actually had a, had a voice to be able to bring that idea to life, um, which was pretty powerful. Okay, um, so we've talked about, as soon as we've talked about that, uh, the design process and empathy being at the front, front end. So we uh, develop products and empathy is, is embedded within our design process. This is um, a mosaic of um, a recent design project. Um, we've totally uh, redesigned our control system for our fireplaces. Previously, this is the type of thing that you get off the shelf, um, and this will operate a gas uh, fireplace. Um, it's designed to go on the wall. It's pretty big, pretty ugly. The only way to differentiate you from your competitor is your little logo down here, which I'll print in any colour you, you like, but that's where it goes. Uh, and we mean, and this has been a massive project. This is the gas control, it's the PCB, it's the communications board, it's the remote control, and it's also um, digital and, and um, uh, smartphone integrated appliances as well. So it's been a big project for us. One little story is, uh, you know, in order to do this stuff, it's not that hard, you just need to sort of give it a boot every now and again. Um, so you want to talk to your customers, right? And uh, I found this reasonably easily, but uh, you know, I got on the phone to my reps and said, oh, can I have some, some, some uh, customer details of, of your good uh, retailers? I'll give them a call. Okay, sweet. All right, so I ring up uh, River City Gas in um, Wanganui. Uh, yeah, hi, it's Ben Hawkins here. I'm the design manager at Renault. I'd just like to talk to some of your customers. You what? <laughs> oh, that's something wrong. No, no, no. Is there going to be some kind of explosion? No, no, no. Gas explosion. Renault's going to do. I was like, no, no, no. Look, everything's fine. Everything's just... oh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Look, I'll get back to you. Give me your email address. I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Yeah, um, you, you sort of throw that one away, that experience away, and ring up the next person. You go, oh, hi, I'm Ben Hawkins. I'm here. I'm the design manager at Renault. You'd really like to talk to your customers about their recent experience with our gas fire. Oh, certainly, Ben. Yeah, I've got a list of about 10 or 12 I can email to you right now. Perfect. You're my guy. Bring them up, get hold of the, custom, the end customers, and organise these empathy interviews. And this is, this is now integral in our design process. So we will go and interview these people in their homes. As a couple, we try and get them. Uh, and just ask them to tell stories and, and their experiences with our, with our gas fires. 
One classic story, and I've got lots around this Koji, but this, this system here will do three things. It will let you manually control the height of your, the flames in the gas fire and the, the amount of heat that it's going to produce. Um, it will thermostatically control the room temperature, so you can tell it the heat's 22 and it will modulate the flames nicely up and down and up and down. And then it's got timers on it. We've got, oh, five day timer, oh, oh, seven day timer, oh, here we go. Um, <laughs> nobody used timers. Completely useless, right? <laughs> Forget about it. Um, manual and auto, completely reversed. So we're talking with, um, uh, with Nairi and Roby. <coughs> oh, how do you use your fireplace? No, and she'll go, oh, what I like to do is I like to thermostatically control it to 16 degrees. And wrote it all, 16 degrees, and then I go to the flame setting and I go up, 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 up. <laughs> <laughs> Just bloody brilliant. Oh, of course it did. I was like, you know what I do? She goes, oh, it's 16 degrees, that's my temperature. No, that, that's not your temperature. You're, you're like completely, you know, blasting it. Oh, you mean I can't do that? So there's a complete mismatch, you know? and it didn't take long to work that out. You know, it's a couple of it's a couple of missed phone calls to say I want to get in touch with the customers. You finally get down there, and before you know it, you've driven to Rotorua for the day, and you're talking with Stevie and Nairi and you're having scones for lunch. So anyway, that is a mosaic of uh, uh, some thoughts and ideas into our control project, and yes, that is a tennis ball with a dial on it. Um, in the middle there. So that's the type of low res prototype. I think we're pretty lucky at Renai, we're product designers, we're product engineers, um, we're pretty hands on, so we're all over um, low res prototyping. Got a fantastic space you saw in the video there called the Love Shack, which is a big um, uh, product development space, and there we've got tools from 3D pr um, printers through to you know just cardboard and foam and everything. So I've got no qualms whatsoever with dragging heaters down. Um, uh, uh, the waterfront in, in, in Auckland, made of cardboard, sat with some paint on them and talking to restaurants about outdoor heating. No qualms whatsoever. Uh, I thought I'd just add in a slide. This, uh, this year I've run um, three collaboration projects with the university, so with the audience that we've got here today. Um, and largely it's been a really positive exercise. We've got the big tip to do it again next year. So I engaged um, this year with the AUT School of Engineering, um, AT School of Design and the Massey School of Engineering. Two of those projects have been a year long and the other project um, was sort of six, six or eight weeks in the, in the first um, semester. These guys here, Siren and Mason, they are working on a, um, a thermoelectric uh, generator, so they're making electricity out of heat. Uh, every gas fire has a fan in it, every one that we make has a fan, it's main um, supply, so if you have a power cut, the fan cuts out, then the fireplace gets up to temperature, cuts out. Um, these guys have done a great job for us this year um, regarding the, the CBEC technology and how to um, create uh, uh, current and voltage from um, power from, uh, uh, from heat. Uh, over here in the top um, right hand side we've got um, John Wong, he's from um, AET School of Design, he was one of four uh, students who came along and the brief was to design a Renai Fire for the year 2020. Um, and he would stand out, so I offered him an internship and he's with us uh, now and has been for the last three four months and that was his product down below there which was a suspended uh, see-through gas fire for the apartment <coughs> market um, and, and quite, quite kind of interesting, you know, he, he, he noticed that with an apartment living often your balcony is, is used quite a bit so could he, could he introduce a fire that was, could be viewed from both angles and suspended in that sort of front. Um, the really interesting thing and great thing I think about uh, collaboration with universities is you get to these sort of radical innovation spaces. Um, through Callaghan we did the uh, improve uh, 360 degree assessment this year and we are very good at iterative product, that tw Stretch 1250 is a good example for that. We're a profitable business, um, it's quite easy to just keep iterating, however we we need to be better at those, those major leaps and those radical innovation projects. So it's great because with universities you can get to places like this. So I showed that video to my friend at work and he said, oh, they've, they've invented a bionic arm. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, no, it's some kind of new sunscreen that uh, you, know, you can't uh, get burned with. But um, no, so the, the innovation is within the flame effect. So um, 
these guys, it's like this kids in garages um, approach that eventually beat big businesses. These guys don't know, you know, what's 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 impossible. They they have the time in the world. They have the creative brains, and I found uh, collaborating with the university has been a fantastic exercise for us this year. Okay, that's that's my lot. So thanks very much.